Hi, we are almost at the end of the course. Here we focus on Unit 7, Lesson 1. In this lesson, we focus on sources in criminal intelligence with emphasis on the assessment criteria. We continue with hypotheses and questions on indicators, a collection plan, and a conclusion. There are different sources of information to be exploited. Human includes interviews, wiretapping, special witnesses, victims, and social media. Documentary refers to government and private reports, presidential notes, journal articles, newspapers, and blogs. Signal sources cover digital and waves. Imagery includes satellites, pictures, and mapping. Massive intelligence refers to large storage networks such as the internet, intranet, or the cloud. Databases refer to large databases containing some codified information and entities or phenomena. This table presents different types of sources according to their level of accessibility. It is self-explanatory. CB means citizens banned. Documents should be subjected to the following assessment criteria. Authenticity relates to the verification of the author's identity, his or her credentials, expertise, knowledge, and connections. Credibility of the documents depends on the qualification of the author and his or her accuracy. Are there any issues about conflict of interest on the subject matter? This should be considered a priori. Representatives means, is it relevant to the issue at hand? Does the document challenge conventional wisdom and knowledge, or can it be labeled as mainstream? Meaning means, what are the depth and breadth of the document? What is its applicability? What does it say about the targeted audience? Questions or hypotheses must be verifiable or testable. They must contain an, as contain an assertion whose effect, affect, correlation, or causality can be verified. An acceptable question should generate an appropriate and pertinent answer without vagueness as to its meaning. A hypothesis must be validated or invalidated by deductive or inductive logic. Data sources should be relevant to the question or hypothesis, including indicators. Indicators are clues or signs coming from a given environment or phenomenon. Indicators must be directly relevant or proximal to the question being studied. A proxy must be justified and supported by a sound rationale. Biases and any other limitations related to the indicators must be known and mentioned a priori or complemented with supplementary indicators if needed or necessary. Use of indicators should be backed with a strong justification and, if possible, by verifiable and reliable literature. Numbers of arrests and seizures are greater indicators of police performance than measures of crime activity on a given territory would be. The collection plan. It must start with one to three main questions or hypotheses. Each can be elaborated upon by asking sub-questions of the hypothesis such as being specific about names, places, or groups. They must identify relevant sources of information for each sub-question or hypothesis, connecting question to the source or the sources of information. 
must propose the time frame to collect information from the identified source or sources. Who, when, or where? Will the source be available and accessible at the needed time? This is important when using human sources for confirmation of findings. Must include expenses related to the collection of information for each source, such as travel, meals, access fees, time, salary, and contractors' costs. Be aware of access fees because in some cases the fees paid invalidate the findings. Analysts must keep in mind what type of analysis they must perform. A slide night presents different levels of analysis. Here is the levels of analysis by criminal problem. It is self-explanatory. It has the crime, the criminals, and the modus operandi, the strategic analysis, and the tactical analysis. If you have any questions about this diagram, please contact me directly. I do this from experience because many students in the past have so many different questions that they cannot be addressed all in this presentation. And I want to address the specific needs of each student. Conclusions. Sources of information such as arrest data, wiretaps, informants, and crime data vary depending on the objective. Analysis of these sources into actionable intelligence is the task of law enforcement analysts. They focus on identifying crime patterns, trends, and linkages between individual offenders and or organized groups. Crime analysis involves the use of various geographical and sociodemographic information in combination with the special techniques to analyze, prevent, and solve crime and safety in security problems. Crime analysis involves the development of critical and substantive products that support law enforcement decision-making efforts that are centered on organized criminal activity. It's focused on organized criminal activity as it relates to law enforcement, makes crime analysis different from intelligence analysis. Keep this difference in mind. What did we cover in lesson one? We covered sources in criminal intelligence, focusing on assessment criteria. We covered hypotheses and questions, indicators, collection plan, and we concluded. Thank you for attending the lecture. I hope it was useful. We will meet again in lesson two. Thank you.